Welcome to the EKG Guy. If this is your first time, I'm glad you're joining us. We're going to look at Wellin syndrome today, kind of what the EKG pattern is, what the diagnostic criteria, what the clinical significance is, and so forth. So let's get started. So since its first description in the early 1980s, Wellin syndrome has unwaveringly matured from a fresh clinical pathologic discovery into a well-recognized combination of abnormal EKG findings and ischemic symptoms. In classic terms, Wellin syndrome signals a lurking high-grade left anterior descending coronary artery stenosis liable to cause a massive acute myocardial infarction. Due to its clinical significance, all physicians and medical professionals should be able to recognize this pattern because of its associated syndrome. And once recognized, urgent referral to percutaneous coronary intervention, or PCI, is key. So let's take a look at what we see here. So the key points that I want you to get across is that Wellin syndrome signifies critical proximal LAD stenosis. So here's the first point, critical proximal LAD stenosis. As you can see here, notice the narrowing there of the artery, okay? And that's before and then after PCI or stent placement, you can see it's much improved. Now this EKG pattern can have normal to minimally elevated cardiac biomarkers. So you may have a patient that has maybe chest pain for the last 24 to 48 hours, then all of a sudden is pain free, and then you get an EKG and it has this pattern. And we'll look at the pattern shortly. Now these patients are at risk for an extensive anterior wall MI within days to weeks if not noticed or treated, okay? As you can imagine, if this lesion here is not fixed, all that area distal to it is at risk of infarction. Now, patients typically require immediate angiography, which is kind of looking at the vessels, and then PCI, or percutaneous coronary intervention, where we can potentially put a stent there, okay? So that's the, the key thing here, and that's why it's so important to uh, recognize this pattern. So what is this pattern? Well, there's two different types. There's a type A, or some will say a type 1, and a type B. Okay, but really it's recognizing these patterns um, in the precordial leads. So notice it's V1 through V6, the precordial leads that we're focusing on. All right, and in those leads, what you may see are deeply inverted or biphasic T waves in V2 to V3, and it may actually extend from V1 to V6. All right, so if you look here at this type A, you see these positive negative biphasic T waves, okay? These ones here, notice that it's positive and then negative, okay? Same thing here. You can see them in V2 and V3, and in this one actually extends to V4, V5, and almost V6, all right? So you can see them there. And then if you look at, so that's the type A point where you have positive negative biphasic T waves. In type B, you have these deeply symmetric T wave inversions, okay? And notice that mostly V2, V3, as we said, but these are extended in V4, V5, V6, and even in V1 here. And what happens is that typically you'll see type A going into type B or one to two, okay? So there's that progression that you tend to see, okay? So that's the type of T waves we see. And important to note is that the ST segment may be isoelectric or minimally elevated, less than one millimeter. So you're not seeing that typical anterior STEMI pattern that you may expect. There's no precordial Q waves that are present, okay? So not really much present there. And there's preserved R wave progression that tends to be seen. It's not always seen, but that's certainly possible. Now, again, these patients have a recent history of angina or chest pain, but when you take the EKG, it may actually be absent. So that's something to note. Now, this patient, this EKG that's taken, actually had a previous infarct in the anterior portion, but it was having this recurrence of it, all right? So we were able to catch it, able to intervene on this lesion and open it back up, okay? That's one thing to note. So where does this pattern come about? Well, it comes from a sudden occlusion of the left anterior descending artery that causes transient anterior ST elevation MI or uh, infarct, okay? So this is a almost narrowing and then opening. So you almost have a reperfusion. The patient will have chest pain. They may be diaphoretic, nauseous. In this stage, may be captured on the EKG, but not always. 
and then you have this reperfusion of this LED, okay, where now the LED is being reperfused, and because of that, that may be because maybe there's clot lysis or the patient took an aspirin before the hospital, the chest pain may resolve, the ST elevation may improve, and the T waves may have this form, this biphasic or inverted form that we see in type B. Now, the T-wave morphology is identical to patients that reperfuse after a successful percutaneous coronary intervention, and that's where this pattern tends to come about. If this artery remains open, so if you have this artery remaining open, okay, this is before any intervention, the T-waves tend to resolve over time. But if the artery occludes, then you can have development of an anterior ST elevation MI, okay? So, in other words, this is an early kind of clue to you that this patient is at risk for critical proximal LAD stenosis and a big anterior STEMI. And that's why you want to catch this early because it could be within days to week that that artery, that vessel actually closes. Okay. So in other words, imagine you have the artery here and then you have critical stenosis of it and you have blood trying to flow distally this way to perfuse this myocardium here. Now, if that artery remains open, okay, or maybe there's lysis or the aspirin tends to, uh, you know, break up that clot, you may have resolution of those T waves. But if you envision this closing, then you can have development of all this area becoming infarcted and you can develop an anterior ST elevation MI, okay? So this pattern that you may see may actually change to ST elevation in those anterolateral lateral uh, precordial leads. So something to keep in mind. So again, Wellen syndrome, critical proximal LAD stenosis, you wanna be able to recognize this pattern because these patients may be actually have chest pain, then come to you, present with an EKG like this that has this pattern, but you get check their cardiac enzymes and the troponins are not significantly elevated, but you want to be aware of that, okay, because these patients are at risk for extensive anterior wall MI because that LAD supplies that region of the heart, and you may want to consider immediate angiography for possible stenting, as we did here with this patient, okay, and it opened it up uh, very nicely. So, again, the diagnostic criteria, you want to look for those deeply inverted or biphasic T waves in V2 to V3, and in some cases can extend into all the precordial leads. Remember, the ST segment may be isoelectric or have very minimal elevation, as we see here, pretty much no elevation in these leads. Now, you typically don't see any precordial Q waves. In this case, we may have seen these. These may be small, these Q waves here from this patient's previous history, okay? There's preserved precordial R-wave progression you may see. And again, remember, these patients have a recent history of this angina, chest pain, and they may be actually pain-free when they present to you. Now, it's important to catch this early because remember, the LAD, this left anterior descending artery, supplies all the anterior portion, okay, the majority of it. So it's a large infarct that can be quite extensive and damaging to the patient's heart if not caught early. So being able to recognize this pattern is really important, okay? Now, there are times that we've seen that you see this pattern, you go in, and nothing's there. But, you know, oftentimes it's better to be reassured and that the patient is not going to develop this huge MI, extensive loss of myocardium if you're able to capture this early. So, this is Wellen syndrome, okay? Again, critical proximal LAD stenosis, a pattern that may have minimally to no cardiac elevation in the biomarkers. And these patients are at risk of extensive anterior MI within days to weeks. So, you know, consider that immediate angiography and stenting to avoid a big heart attack. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available. So again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, okay? So this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100 
more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay, so completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay, these are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book. Okay, and then you also have the pocket guide available. So you can choose which format. They are the same thing, both these uh, book and the pocket guide, uh, different formats. Uh, I really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go. Now with the book, you also get videos. So notice these are the videos, okay? And these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic. And it's used now among many institutions. So use uh, check that out. Now, what it also includes are calipers. So yes, you get calipers with this course. Okay. Um, I don't know anyone else that offers that, but you do get calipers. I think they're very helpful and they can, uh, you know, if you know how to use them correctly, uh, can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on. Okay. And then you also get our pocket EKG reference. Okay, this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows. Uh, and this is really nice. It has every code, as you saw earlier, laid out there, very small pocket guide available. I had help with uh, my colleague, Dr. Peter Noseworthy, who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it. So this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful. So go to the EKG course, you'll see examples of lectures, okay, why we developed this, okay, a lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning EKGs, having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and, you know, still struggling. So uh, my struggle is a struggle that I don't want you to have in learning them, okay, you can read all those introductory books, but honestly, they are not uh, enough, okay, and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even, it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material. So uh, we don't really make much off it. It's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care. That's why we do this and we love doing it. So thank you so much for your support. Um, if you have any questions, just leave them below and we're happy to answer them. All right, have a great day.